All right, we just picked up this 2005 Can-Am Outlander Max 400. It's a two-up machine, and uh, it's actually pretty nice, considering I paid 460 bucks for it. It has all new tires on it, the guy said. These typically go for like thirty-five to four thousand dollars in my area, so I got it so cheap because this machine does not run, and the owner thinks it has low compression. So he said he was plowing his driveway with it; it's running perfectly. He went in to take a break. He came back out, and it would not fire up. So he took it to his local mechanic, and they uh, said it has low compression and quoted him $3,200 to fix it. So he's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So he posted it on Facebook Marketplace and uh, I bought it for 460 bucks. I guess I was like one of 50 people that wanted this thing. So it was a hot commodity. I think being the two out machine, people like that for ice fishing and trail riding and stuff. So this thing has, let's see how many miles on it. I think it was pretty high mileage. 5,486 miles. Um, 612 hours, so that is quite a few hours on there. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's not a low compression issue. I think it might be a fuel issue. The guy said when he was plowing his driveway with it, he said he felt no power loss. He said there were zero issues up until the point where it wouldn't start. So it actually does crank over here. Quick show you. So I don't think a valve let loose or anything. Let's see, click the start button. Turns over just fine. It sounds good cranking. So today, we're gonna see what's going on with it. And we're hoping it's a simple issue. So, let's uh, get working on it. See what we find, it should be an interesting one. I've never worked on a Can-Am four-wheeler before, so it should be good. All right, we got the machine in the garage here. So, turn it on, and this thing just cranks. Cranks good, but uh, does not fire up. Let's turn it to reserve and see what happens here. Maybe it will fire right up. Give it a couple throttles here. Let's see. Can't see anything in the tank. Smell gas. Play with the kill switch a little bit. It's not wanting to go. So we're gonna quick check the oil, see if there's any metal chunks in there. Take the dipstick out right here. I believe this is the engine oil. So let's see what that looks like. Here, the guy said it was serviced every year by the shop he took it to diagnose this thing so he said he trusted them but they came back with that $3,200 repair job and he said new way so let's see how much oil's in there if you screw in the cap maybe 
maybe it got low on oil. It is pretty low. Right there, you can see. So maybe they drain the oil to diagnose it. I am not sure. All right, let's quick measure the battery voltage. All right, we're at DC volts here. We should read over 12 volts. Twelve point one. So it is over twelve volts. Should fire up with that. But uh, what we're gonna do is quick put a starter on there and jump it just to make sure it's not uh, low cranking amps. All right. Let's see if it makes a difference here. Let's crank it over. Choke on. Nothing. So that didn't help anything. Let's get the seat off. That looks like an air box to me. Ooh. Air box was a little covered there. There's a lot of dirt in the air filter. So maybe it does have low compression. And I think it's caked full of dirt and sand. So hopefully nothing got in the engine there. Okay, there's the spark plug boot. Let's get that off. All right, that was barely on there. Let's see. There's some wire exposed there yet. We'll cut that back, according that back a little bit. Screw that cap back on. Our spark plugs in there pretty tight. That feels like it. Alright. Now let's try this again. Turn this to on. See if anything happens. Time to get the spark plug out. And low compression could be tight valves too. And I don't think they checked that. I get your swivel. All right, plug looks really wet. So it is sucking in fuel. See how wet that plug is? Smells like gas. It's pretty carboned up. I wonder if it's a fell plug. See the tip has a lot of carbon on there. All right, we'll ground this to the frame. See if we have spark here. Turn this on, crank it over, see if we light up the plug. Oh yeah. Definitely 
a spark. Really good spark. Alright, we got a brand new plug. Let's put that in there. Let's see what happens. Alright, here we go. Let's see what happens. Nothing. So, it was not the plug. Alright, so I took this plug out and it was not wet. So what we're going to do is squirt a little fuel down the cylinder hole. We'll see if it uh, at least pops over here. Um, hopefully it lights up something and something happens. But uh, maybe it's just not getting fuel. The other plug looked wet. This one does not. So, I don't know. Very, very strange. All right, got a little gas going in. Maybe it's not getting fuel here. Let's get that doused. Get the spark plug doused back in here. Let's see what happens. We'll choke it. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Back to on. All right, so it's probably not a fuel problem if uh, it doesn't fire up with fuel down the down the spark plug hole. So what we're going to do is a quick compression test and see what we're at for compression. All right, let's see what this compression is at now. All right, what is this gonna be at? So we should have like over 150, I would think. Let's see, throttle open. We have like zero compression. Yeah, about 25 pounds compression. So definitely low. Um, it doesn't look like we have a bent valve or anything because it would be zero compression. So I'm thinking it might be either rings or, or maybe the valves are out of spec here. So what we're gonna do is put a little oil down the cylinder and see if it's the rings. If compression shoots up, it's either the cylinder scored or the rings are uh, are bad on it. The tests are going back in. See what we get this time. Again, throttle open. All right, same amount. So it does not look like it's the rings. Probably not the cylinder. So it could just be the valves. Hmm. All right, so it looks like all the plastics are coming off. 
Um, it looks like air filter box coming off. This whole area has to come off so we can get to the, the head there. All right, if we come around to the other side, I took the plastic piece off right here. Looks like we can get to the valve cover from here. So if we kind of have to work around these cables here, but uh, I think we can get to it. So let's try that. Looks like a couple eight millimeters holding on that valve cover. Not a whole lot of room. Here's really hard to get to. Well, if it's just the valves, then I'll probably contact the guy and say don't go to those mechanics anymore. Because they just scam the guy, pretty much. But definitely could be low compression. Because there was a bunch of dirt getting sucked in, it looked like, from the air filter. Oh, this one's a tough one. I can barely reach it. There's the cam chain. All right. Elf cover looks good. I guess the mechanic said it skipped a tooth on the timing. But if we look in there. Cam chain feels pretty tight. So I don't see how it skipped a tooth. I'm gonna try to reach in here and we'll have to get this thing to top dead center. I'm looking for any markings on the sprocket. Oh yeah. There's two on the back side. You can see one are coming through right there. Those have to be parallel with the surface of the head. So we can pull this thing over with the pull start and just watch the sprocket until it becomes aligned here. Oh, nope, those are tight. So that must be 180 off there. Right there. Yeah, the intake valves are tight. <laughs> so if you look at the exhaust valves, try to listen to it. Hear that? Those are loose. Intake valves are extremely tight. So we're gonna adjust the valve clearance and hopefully that solves the problem. That would be awesome. Yeah, and here's the decompression mechanism. That seems to be working. All right, sorry it's hard to see in there, but uh, there's no better angle I can get. All right, so the valve specs are going to be for the intake, um, 2.4 thousandths to 5.5 thousandths. Exhaust is going to be 4.3 thousandths to 7.5 thousandths. So we'll set the exhaust at right around 6 thousandths here. And they're probably pretty close to that. Let's see. Again, it's pretty hard to work in here. All right, exhaust valves are perfect. So 
So those are good. Let's check out the intake valves here. We'll put them to the lowest setting and see if they even go in. Now those are really tight. So we're gonna set these to right around four thousandths of an inch. We'll set them to right there. Wrench. There we go. Loosen that up and then twist this screw out. I think it's, yeah, she's locked in there pretty free. There we go. Four thousand screw. That's perfect right there. We can lock up that nut and we should be good on this side. Let's see if it's a little too tight. Perfect. Get that locked in. Perfect. Now we'll loosen up the last one back here. That one's extremely tight back there. Hard to get to. There we go. I can hear him moving. That's what we want to hear. All right, those are all set in there now. You can hear it. Exhaust valves are perfect as well. So we can get the valve cover back in and lock back down and we'll see if compression jumped up. This is this is exciting. <laughs> we might get a really good deal on this thing. Alright, get this locked down. Alright, here we go, moment of truth. Let's get the compression tester in here and See what we get. Hopefully it went up, it should, in theory. <laughs> but we might have problems with the cylinder as well, so we'll see. I'm hoping that was the fix. All right, here we go. 25 pounds compression. Let's see if it went up at all. Throttle open. Went up to about 60. So I think it's got a decompression mechanism, so we might be good. Let's see. Get a spark plug in there. Let's see what happens here. At least it went up a little bit.
No way. <laughs> she fired right up. That that's crazy. So we just have to get this thing to idle now. Probably needs a carb clean, I'm guessing. But uh man, I cannot believe that fired right up. That's pretty cool. Honestly, I think it just needs the oil turned up. Pretty good now. It was running perfect, everything was going good, and then all of a sudden it wouldn't fire back up again. So I took the plug out and the plug was dry. So I'm thinking it's not getting gas now. I don't know if this thing has a pump or not, but uh, we're gonna check that out and probably go through the carb because I'm thinking something got clogged. All right, we popped the air box off here. Gonna pump that. See if, uh, see if anything comes out of this line here. Let me turn it over. You should pump it to the carb. Oh yeah, it's coming out now. Yep, we're getting gas to it. Carburetor is off. Let's take a peek in there. See what's going on. All right, 
so I find it kind of weird that this thing was running good and all of a sudden it stopped running. So I'm not sure what's going on with it. We're going to find out now. But it looks like there was gas in there. It's dripping everywhere. So. Definitely getting gas. Let's see if the jets are clogged. Yeah, lots of gas in there. Looks pretty clean. <laughs> Looks like some sand or something in there too. Open the pilot's clog. Let's see. Pilot was open. It's not good. That all looks open. Everything looks really good so far. Let's bring him back. A look underneath the float here. Needle all looks perfect in there. Hmm. Take a look at our uh, seat. Out. O ring still looks good in there. There's a little gunk in there though. Look at on the end of the filter here. There's some crud. Looks like some sand. So blow that out really good, but it wasn't like completely clogged or anything. Alright, we've got our fuel screw right here. Assume he turns in. One, two, three, exactly three. Well, spring. There we go. starter jet here. That was clear too. Hmm. Wonder what the heck's going on with this thing. Yeah, everything looks good. So we can blow through that and reinstall it. I don't think that was the problem though. Everything looked to be clear. And then one little check I want to do is the uh, I just want to check the diaphragm in here quick too. Make sure that looks good. It looks good. <sighs> diaphragm doesn't look ripped or anything. Yeah, diaphragm looks good. It's all in one piece. Looks perfect. All right, we got the carburetor cleaned out, all back together. Let's see if she fires up now.
Well, that was not the answer, so I don't know. We'll have to test compression again and see where that's at. All right, we changed out the spark plug, no change. We made sure gas was getting to it, put gas directly down the carb and the cylinder, no change. Didn't even try to start. Um, so we put oil down the cylinder and the compression shot way up. So I'm thinking either the rings are stuck or the cylinder walls are scratched or like the piston rings like out of spec. But uh, let's see if it starts up now. We put oil down the cylinder so compression should raise up and it should puff over. The goal is to get that ring unstuck, hopefully. Let's see. All right, it definitely wanted to go, so I'm thinking rings are stuck. All right, we put some marble mystery oil down the cylinder. She fired up. We're gonna let this run, see if that piston frees up here. You can see it's smoking pretty good now. running this good. So it must just be really low compression. Look at it puffing out the smoke here. In about 10 minutes, it's still running. Idling perfect, but you can see it's still smoking pretty good. So the test is going to be if it starts back up. Let's see what happens here. Now will it fire back up here? Yep. Huh. Fired right back up. I'm going to try to put everything back together and take it for a ride. See if we can get those rings to free up here.
All right, it's still smoking. Revs out, goes good. Just smoking a little bit. And the smoke goes away sometimes. It's really weird. Fires back up. Yeah, fires right back up. Let's do a compression test and see where we're at right now with it. Before we were at 60. See, it stopped smoking now. Isn't that weird? All right, so it looks like it's running pretty decent. Obviously, it's not going to run right without the air filter on this carburetor. We're gonna check the compression again, see if that shot up. We put some of the Marvel Mystery Oil down the cylinder and it must have freed up the ring or something because then it instantly started up with that. So I'm guessing that ring is stuck still. And uh, it periodically just shoots out smoke. So either the rings are super worn or they are stuck or something's going on. <laughs> but uh, let's just quick check compression, see if it went up at all. Looking at the plug, we just got that out. It's not all black or anything. It's not wet. So, not a ton of oil's getting by. Hmm. Yeah, let's see what we get. This thing over, throw it open. Over a hundred. We're like at one, one ten. So that shot way up compared to the sixty we were at. So I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I think what we're gonna do is ride it for a bit. And see if this ring frees up completely, because I'm thinking it's a ring. But, uh, yeah, I guess we won't know until we tear it down, which we might do. So I'm going to go ride it for a bit. We'll come back, test compression again. And uh, we're hoping compression goes up to, like, at least 150. All right, we rode this thing for another half an hour. Absolutely zero smoke now. And uh, it's running pretty good. So let's test compression again, see if it uh, went up at all. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get. Throttle open. Still about 110. So compression stayed about the same. Right at 110. Hmm. All right, it's the next morning. I took a little break from it, and I was kind of uh, thinking in my mind, like, you know, it's kind of weird that gas was shooting out of the carb. You know, it was kind of like misting out of the carb. And I was kind of thinking, like, what would cause that? And pressure would have to be pushing out the carb for gas to be spraying out of the carb like that. So I was like, hmm, what would cause that? That would mean that when the piston's coming up, the intake valves would be open and it was pushing that pressure out. And what would cause that? Timing would have to be off. So to time this thing, there's a bolt near the crank down here. It's really hard to see, but it's right down here, 10 millimeter bolt, and it goes to the crank. And what you do is you turn over the crank until you find the notch and a bolt will fit in the notch and it will lock it in top dead center. So I did that and it looks like our timing was off about three teeth. 
So the timing was over here and it was off. It was pointing up like that. It wasn't parallel to the surface of the head like that. So I quick changed the timing on this thing and uh, um, the valves were actually tight in the position that it was timed to. So I then changed the valves again and loosened those up and made them to five thousandths. So now when you go to pull this thing over, there is a ton of compression. Like you can barely pull it. So I'm thinking that might have done the trick right there. I think the timing was off the whole time. So what we're gonna do is quick check the compression before we put the valve cover back on. I just wanna see if that compression went way up. I think it did. I think that was the problem all along. The intake valves were getting tight too early and letting air escape through the carburetor and uh, it was lowering compression and uh, shooting gas out the carb causing a rich condition. So I think that was the problem. But uh, let's confirm it and do a compression test. All right, here we go. Hopefully this will be the last compression test we have to do. Here we go. See what we get here. Throttle open. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Compression shot up to almost 200. That was the ticket. That's awesome. So it was timing the whole time. So we'll make sure the cam chain's nice and tight, get everything back on here, the valve cover, and we'll see if this thing fires up. All right, everything's bolted down. Let's see if it fires up. All right, we got this thing back together. One last thing I wanna do is top off this oil. So let's check it. We ran it for about five minutes. Let's check it now, see where uh, we're at here. And we're just at the lower mark, so let's get this topped off. Just using some 10W40 wet clutch oil here. What's Vinny up to? <laughs> All right, let's see if this thing has power now. Oh, it's so much better.
right, this thing's running perfectly. It has tons of power now. It doesn't bog at all. Idling perfect. No knocking sounds at all. Except for the pipe. <laughs> yeah, so. Mechanic said it was gonna be $3,200 to fix. Looks like it's fixed. For zero dollars. Just a little time. Not smoking at all. This one's fixed. Let's go get this thing cleaned up. All right, just got back from the car wash. This thing's looking pretty good. The plastics are a little faded in some spots and some stickers were peeled off in other spots, but it's not a bad overall quad for uh, 400, what we pay, $60 for this thing, plus an air filter, which was like 10 bucks. So $470 in total we have into this thing. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I ended up messaging the guy on Facebook that sold it for me and I sent him a video of the machine running and I said uh, got it running timing was off and valves need to be adjusted I talked to your mechanic about that and he said I agree good for you so at least he wasn't too mad um, I'm sure he'll have a long talk with his mechanic <laughs> and see what went wrong there because um, the mechanic quoted him $3,200 to get this thing fixed so obviously it did not take $3,200 it actually took zero dollars <laughs> just a lot of time but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy we figured it out. It was a little tricky um, trying to diagnose this thing. Just because there's no timing marks on the flywheel, you actually have to take the bolt off down there and line up the crank perfectly. So that kind of threw me off. But once we figured that out, we got this thing up and running good. So I hope you guys enjoyed the process of the diagnosing, the picking up, and the first ride. Definitely a fun one, and uh, we got pretty lucky on it. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video, and until next time.